Hi everyone, I'm gonna make a video right now about why I choose to train every single day in martial arts. Um, uh, I'm not doing this to kind of, you know, tap myself on the shoulder. I'm doing it to kind of maybe help you and give you a different perspective on what you can do to try to up your training in martial arts. Um, you know, maybe you only train one day a week and you feel like you're not getting enough out of it and you wanna up it to two days a week or Maybe you're at two days a week and you want to up it to four days a week. Maybe you're um, already training, you know, very heavily in the martial arts at four or five days a week and you want to give it that little extra push. Now, uh, I'm going to say a lot of things and kind of uh, give you my perspective on why I choose to do this and how it kind of all came about. I guess I would say that, um, you know, in the early days of me training in Kenpo Karate, uh, in and around 1985 and in 1986, I was a, a beginner belt, and um, at that time, um, I, I would compete in martial arts tournaments, in sparring, you know, in forms and weapons. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the sparring part of it really got to me, and it was something that I really want to do and, and do well in and win. Um, but in those early years, 85, 86, I would go to martial arts tournaments, and uh, quite often, I would uh, end up right in the bottom. And it wasn't fun, you know, getting punched in the head or kicked in the ribs or, or whatnot. And then, you know, there was no everyone wins a trophy at the time. It was very much, you know, first place, second place, third place. Sometimes there would be a fourth place, but that was it. And I, I got used to um, the first several tournaments walking home with, very, with nothing. In 1987, uh, I was, I don't know, maybe a, a blue or green belt in Kempo at the time. I think maybe green. And... Uh, uh, we had in for a seminar Master Wally J. And Wally J was, uh, as a lot of you know, was a jujitsu expert. And he came in for a seminar, and I was so amazed by him uh, being an older man and the ease with which he could, you know, take people to the ground through wrist locks, finger locks, etc. And I went home that day and said to my father, um, That's it, I am going to do this for the rest of my life. And from that point forward, I really started to up my training. So much so that when I got to um, my next tournament, I think, again, I was about green belt. Uh, I won the first place in, in forms and fighting and weapons, won the grand championship. I thought, man, how do I do this? Uh, and I knew how I did this. I, I, I trained way harder. Um, got my black belt in Kempo Karate in 1990, August 11th of 1990. And the reason why I train so much now, in fact, every single day, is it just becomes part of me. It's not, um, you know, it's like when people say, why do you go up and go to work every day? Because you have to. Or why do you brush your teeth in the morning to have good hygiene? This is something that I just do every day, every single day. Uh, in fact, the last time I missed a single day of training in martial arts was 2018. So it's uh, August 2022 now or tomorrow, September 1st. So it's been about four and a half years since I missed a day of training. And I do it, you say, why? Well, a number of things. One, I love the martial arts. And that's the reason I work as hard as I work. If you love something, truly, you invest more time in it. So my passion for martial arts is so high that I, just, I can't go a day without training. Uh, I have to train every single day. Um, uh, so love for martial arts is, is big. The other one is rank. Um, I currently hold a, an eighth degree black belt in American Kempo. I received that rank under Grandmaster uh, Larry Tatum in uh, 2020. And uh, I'm also a black belt in Modern Arnis and Black Dragon Kung Fu. And I'm also ranked in uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu under Henner and Hilon Gracie. That is a huge responsibility. I can't hold rank and not train all the time. Because I feel like at my rank, that's a humongous, humongous belt. These are big belts to hold. And people are looking to you from all parts of the world about advice on Kempo or how to, how to mix Kempo with Jiu-Jitsu or how to incorporate various weapons routines into training. I have to train all the, all the time. In fact, I have three black belt fifth degrees. Uh, and, a, and, and a couple fourth degrees who naturally, because of their passion, raise my training to a higher level because the expectation is they're coming to me for help. 
You know, I have an international class. We have people in Chile, across the United States, Canada. They're coming to me for help. I need to train all the time. So I feel like, you know, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose in a fight at all. It really doesn't. It, I go back to Mr. Miyagi. You make a good fight, nobody bother. But here's the thing is, is if you're in a, f a fight situation, the way... I'm because of my training and I'm saying this honestly and humbly the way you're going to beat me is to knock me out or make me tap because I will not I will not uh, give up by endurance because of my training I just train all the time a tap would have to be like I'm going to sleep or you catch me in an arm bar but you won't that's this is me and I'm saying this humbly I will not give up because I just train hours on end uh, uh, many hours a day that is who I am when people talk about things like, well, you know, I don't really agree with training every day because you need rest days. You know, my response to that is what's a rest day? You know, is a rest day, for example, if I'm, if I'm sparring heavy one day, heavy, like I'm maybe go doing some full contact sparring, for example. Well, I'm not, might not, I might not do full contact sparring the next day. I might need to rest my body. But you know what? I might do star block set, short form one, kicking set, delayed sword, uh, up to sword and hammer, maybe some of the orange techniques, done. So, you know, it, it, one could argue, you know, you're going to work and you're walking upstairs or you're, you're, you're going for a walk. I'll do that through martial arts. Martial arts is all I know uh, because I do it all the time. So rest days, it's not like you're at the gym. I'm not saying for training, you know, if you're, if you're doing a lot of chest and bicep, keep doing that every single day. No, you need to let your body relax, but you can change up your routine. Now, Another way I do that is through cross training and, and people have different perspectives on cross training, but it's usually those that don't cross train that are negative towards it. So for example, if I'm doing sparring one day, stand up sparring, the next day I might do Gracie Jiu Jitsu, work the ground. The next day I might work forms and sets from Kempo. The next day I might work self-defense techniques. I might have a day where I do weapons training, for example. So I'm constantly, because of the my martial arts knowledge, changing up my routine if it rather than doing the same thing over and over if you only know american kempo a lot of my subscribers are american kempo you know it might be hard to, to discipline yourself to do it every single day no problem one day you might work forms next day you might work self-defense techniques next day you might work set uh, sets next day you might work uh hitting the heavy bag or hitting a century bob you know, next day you might work on footwork patterns. You're constantly training and changing up your routine. That's so, so, so important. Um, so you train every day um, in a way where you can train every day. So if you're pushing yourself to the absolute limit, well, no, you're not going to be able to do much the next day. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some days, like there was one day in 2022 where I did eight hours. I, I taught three Gracie Jiu Jitsu seminars at three hours each. And then I taught martial arts, Kempo Karate for two hours. I was tired. So the next day I wasn't going to kill myself, you know, doing um, a heavy, heavy workout. I, I did a few forms, a few sets, et cetera. That was it. But you can change up how you do it and respond to your body. The whole idea too is, oh, everything is full contact. If you're not getting hit every day, you're not training. I mean, that, you know, in the nicest way possible, that is the biggest amount of BS ever. It really is. Um, you shouldn't constantly be getting hit full out every single day. That is not great training at all. Great training is training to fight, to training to do martial arts for a lifetime. I like hitting people and not getting hit. You know, when I spar, I'm not like hanging in there. Okay, you hit me, I hit you. Yeah, let's toughen it out. I mean, that's all fun. Some fun sometimes when you're when you're younger and you're just trying to prove who can outstrike someone. That's not skill. Skill is distance management, keeping your range, hitting them, and not getting hit back. And that brings me to the next point. You know, and and I'm saying this really honestly and humbly. What you devote yourself to, that will be what you're good at in terms of endurance. So for example, I am not a good swimmer at all. I can swim, you know, in a deep end, in an ocean, but I don't like you touching my head or grabbing hold of me. I panic. I'm not a good swimmer, but I fight a lot. So I will not gas based on fighting because it's just something I always do. 
I feel like honestly I can spar for hours on end because I know how to relax, control my breathing, hit hard when I have to, and then take it easy. But what you devote your time to will determine how good you are at it. So knowledge is the most important thing in martial arts. If you don't have your knowledge and your skill, it doesn't matter if the person is six foot three and 220 pounds of ripping muscle. If they have no knowledge of how to fight, they're not going to be able to do much. But outside of knowledge, you must have endurance. So sometimes I fight people who are literally ripped. They're in really good shape and they're younger than me, but they gas when they fight me. And it's not just that my skill level is higher. It's just, this is just something I do all the time. I know that they're going to gas because they're not used to this pressure of sparring. But you put me in an environment where I have to, you know, run long distance or swim long distance you'll think that my endurance isn't very good because it's not an area I devote to. But when you devote your time to something and you become knowledgeable and you, you develop your endurance and you develop strength, then you can, you can train every single day. Uh, the other thing I would just say too is, um, for those that know me uh, uh, personally, uh, I'm, a, I'm a PhD, I got my PhD in sociology, but I'm the chair of food and nutritional sciences uh, at Brescia University College here in London, Ontario, the importance of healthy eating is massive. So if you are constantly eating foods high in fat, high in sugar, you eat a lot of fast food, I'm not surprised when you say, oh, I could never train every single day or more than three days a week. My body can't take it. Well, of course you can't take it because you're not eating properly. So for the most part, I eat plant-based whole foods. That doesn't mean I don't also love a steak or something whole, but I won't eat a lot of, I don't eat much uh, processed foods. You don't see me eating a lot of potato chips or uh, ice cream and stuff. I don't do that. I don't drink regular Coke. So I eat predominantly plant-based whole foods. My energy level is always high because I'm constantly putting healthy foods in my body. You know, so sometimes I feel like when people talk about, oh, I can't train, you know, uh, as hard as you, Mr. Seabrook, because my body can't take it. You know, I would go, well, you know, what are you putting in your body that a lot to, to make you say that? You know, what you eat is very much who you are. So you must eat healthy. It's so important. It keeps you, it's good for your mental health. There's a clear link between nutrition and mental health. And of course, nutrition and physical health. So I train every single day. I highly encourage all of you to up your training um, by committing yourself to uh, the martial art that you do, I'm assuming most is, is Kenpo Karate. And, and again, um, the, I, I believe there's huge value in cross-training. Uh, American Kenpo is a stand-up striking art. It is not a ground system. And people will say, well, no, there's tons of ground fighting in Kenpo. You just need to know where to look. That's untrue. There's no ground fighting in Kenpo. You can apply your Kempo on the ground, but it's not going to be successful against someone who is highly trained in jujitsu. So for me, I use the jujitsu to enhance my Kempo by giving me an understanding, hey, if my stand-up work techniques didn't work that were meant to design to be done stand-up, I have many, many, many ways to explore what to do if I'm on the ground. So that gives me more opportunity to up my training. Um, I also do tons of kettlebell kettlebell for strength. So I do that, but I won't do, you know, an hour and a half of kettlebell and then an hour and a half of martial arts. My body can't do that. I might do 15, 20 minutes of kettlebell as a warm up, getting my whole core engaged, getting my legs engaged, boom, and then I jump in. So up your training, train as much as you can, and uh, you'll be so much better. And log your training also, write down what you train and you'll see the gaps of what you're missing. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now.